Good morning, everyone. So we have uh, here left, right, and center, right? So it's not uh, the your political alignment, but it's because the way you are sitting here. So I call them left, right, and center. You know, so uh, this environmental studies course is a very interesting course. And when I and Professor Sethi start looking at the syllabus, which is given on the UGC, uh, in the UGC, that what is the syllabus, we realize that actually whatever is given in the syllabus, even we do not teach that for our masters. We do not even teach it for, even for our undergraduate students who have civil and or orientation. That's huge. That's very vast. So, in fact, then comes the question that why this is designed in the way it's designed. Why Supreme Court has to, you know, intervene and say that, okay, we need this kind of slavers. We have to compulsory teach this, this environmental studies and then what, and so on and so forth. And similarly, it's also interesting that First of all, Supreme Court has to ask us that we should teach this course. And our Prime Minister has to say, start a campaign, which is called Swachh Bharat Abhiyan. So I asked to my students the uh, other day that, are we dirty people? Are we really dirty that our Prime Minister has to say this, oh, you clean, yeah, yeah, what are you doing? You're, you're dirty. So many of, uh, they were, yeah, I don't take bath on one day and sometimes it happens three days, four days. Then I asked them the question, you know, that what your mother tells you every day. Don't, don't make this dirty, don't make that dirty, don't make this dirty. That's always every one of us tells to our kids and even our parents tells in this age as to us, ganda mat karo. Okay. So that's for sure that we are not dirty people, right? Are we? No. Then the question comes is why our country is not so clean then? Okay, and why it's prime minister who has to say it, it as a prime minister and why the Supreme Court, Honorable Supreme Court has to say it from there? Okay, so that's the question that everyone of, of us should answer. And that also answers that why the slavers is kept in a, such a wide domain that probably everything related to environment is covered. That means we have to consider the different issues which are under different communities, under different places, which are related to environment and focus on that. So basically it's good that any student's objective of any student is to pass the course. There's no denying in that I cannot deny, anyone can den no, cannot deny. That's fair. But in addition to that, this is not only a course which is for understanding thermodynamics, mechanics, etc. This is also a course to make sure that our country as a, our communities are cleaner and environmentally friendly and they know what are the issues. So for example, issues in, in this part and the northern part or the right part may be different in the southern part. So I personally think is that it's, it's not a bad idea to tweak your course in the way which is more appropriate for your state, for your area, etc. So that's why it is kept open, okay? But nevertheless, we have to always cover the syllabus. Make sure that it's, you are not covering the syllabus because otherwise student will fail that they will forget what the environment first you are failing in the course. That's the another thing. So how we have, so I have taught this course now almost for, let me see, for five years now. It's uh, fortunate and unfortunate that when you join a faculty related to courses of environmental engineering in IITs, this is where you have to teach it. Sometime compulsorily, sometime likely, unlikely also, okay? So once I taught this course for two years as a complete course of 40 lectures, which probably many of you do or many of others who will come to your center will do. But now I am teaching it as a crisp module, which is just five, six lectures, which we are doing here at IIT Bombay. So what I realize is that students sometimes are very interesting to know something which is which they are not knowing. But at the same time, to understand this, it's a very interdisciplinary course. We cannot make it very technical also. Okay, and at the same time, we cannot make it very simple. For example, if I tell to student that 
you know, if you produce more waste, then there is more problems. So everyone of them knows it, right? But then if I just tell them there is a pyrolysis, there is a technology to produce energy, this is a cost, this produces X kind of component, which probably is creating Y kind of problems, which is beyond their understanding, because ultimately they are not expert, becoming expert in environment studies. So we have to make a kind of balance in between, so that it's not too technical, and at the same time it's not too simple also. You don't want to make, a sh to make it as this kind of course, which probably everyone knows. Okay, so that kind of balance need to be done. For example, I remember one student, I asked him something, he said, as we are learning this course from the class fifth, I was really surprised. So, the, you, so I asked him, you mean to say that what I'm teaching you, it was told in fifth class? Yes, sir, at least not in fifth and sixth standard. So you cannot make it that sim simple also. That means, you know, then they lost interest. What are you talking about? I know it up front. But at the same time, you cannot make it very difficult also. So it is to sensitize the issue, to make sure that the people start thinking in terms of environment, but at the same time give them a really good technical know-how or technical thought, so that they can implement it or they can think a little bit. For example, I cannot, I shouldn't say that if we produce energy from waste, the whole world will change. All coal power plants will be gone. That's too much. But I should realistically tell them, okay, it's a few megawatt we will produce, but that's also useful energy. So you shouldn't make it, you know, sometimes what we do is as an environmentalist or sometime working on this, so we make Allah gulla of everything. If I don't use this paper, the world will change. The world will not change in that way. The world doesn't change in that way. So do not sensitize this to extent that it becomes, I know you are, every day you're telling the same thing. But make them something to understand realist, in realistic terms. What if I reduce my waste by 10%? What is good? Why it is so good to segregate it? Everyone knows segregation, right? For example, I'm always talking about solid waste. Everyone knows it. So why we are not doing it? Because people do not think beyond what happens after segregation and why this segregation is so important that if I do segregation, the whole problem largely is solved. Because we never told them. You know, we will tell to everyone, please segregate your waste, put it into dry and wet wind, etc. Okay, so that they know, right? I don't think in India with the TVs and all that, it, there shouldn't be any person who doesn't know it. Then why we are not doing it? Because we don't understand in realistic terms that what can happen if I segregate it and what are the virtue of segregating it. Okay, so sensitization is one thing. Take it simple because of it's interdisciplinary, they are not becoming expert in that and also tell them something which is technical and realistic also. Okay, so this is what I understood in telling in six years. So what I will do is I, have, I will cover a module which is on solid waste management and I keep on interacting and I will try to do it in the way I do it in the class, but because I understand that you are not students. But then I'm just trying to tell you that how I deal with this. And please feel free to interrupt and tell me that how collectively all you and me can deliver it to a larger community, which is more teachers, and then probably they can deliver it to the more students. So we have to decide in totality in I and you that what is the good way of communicating this course or let's say this module to the students and the faculty. This is what I am expecting from you guys. Interrupt any time, say anything you want to say, because ultimately it's not that I want to teach you, but I'm just telling, to, trying to tell you that how I deal with this. And if you will find it said, so silly sometimes, it's not so important, but I'm doing it this way. If you say that this is not the proper way, I will change it. Okay, so we start. So I, I am Manish Chanel, I, my office is just adjacent to this building, just in behind this. It's called Center of Environment Science and Engineering, Professor Seti is also there. So you know where is Center of Environment Science and Engineering. Okay, so we basically if you find that in other institutions, in your institutions probably, this environmental engineering is largely with civil engineering and sometimes with the chemical engineering or sometime in biochemical or biotech, etc. But with, with us, we have an independent center on that, so we are a little bit lucky in that sense, okay? But by the way, in my training, I'm a civil engineer. So, so I will talk about solid waste management and as I mentioned, the way I teach in the class and, and my classes sometimes are so funny that, you know, what happened is one time I was teaching this course and I always tell the stories. 
because I know that the students are so intelligent they can read it. And in the exam also they wrote the stories. I told, what is this? Then he told, sir, you always tell the story. I told you, story is you have to make understand it. Don't write story in the final paper. Okay? So that is really interesting. Then I have to tweak and reduce my story things. Now I am a little bit more in teaching than stories. So uh, what is solid waste? And don't expect that I will teach and you will be happily meditating and listening. I don't allow my student to sleep. I'm a little bit of cranky teacher in that sense. So what's solid waste then? Should I ask someone from left, right, center? OK, the person who is in the maroon shirt. So I'm sorry. So most of you have taught this solid waste management course already? Yes? OK, that's why. That's fine. Then there's nothing to teach. We just discuss. Yeah. What is solid waste, sir? The day-to-day -day life, we are, what we are wasting, the municipal waste. OK, very waste nice. Management. I thought when I say solid waste, you say the waste which is solid in nature. That's what many of my students say. What are you asking, sir? This is not a question even. Yeah. So it's basically a waste which is solid in nature. But if you see the waste coming from industries, etc., that's also solid. Okay, many types of waste we generate either can be solid, liquid, and gases, but many of them is solid in nature, even from industries. So in this particular course, or you know, this ES 200, largely what I teach, this is the name of course we teach here. We do not largely talk about the industrial waste because the simple reason is that waste which is generated in industry is a little bit far away from municipalities. We largely talk about the waste which is solid in nature and generated in the municipalities. Okay, so municipalities, everyone of probably lives in municipalities. There are many less people living in villages nowadays. Of course, in terms of total population, not, not that less. But when I say that the waste generated here, the solid waste, which is generated inside the municipalities, and that's why I call it as a, or we call it as a municipal solid waste. And then there is agriculture, industrial mining, etc., waste that has some specific characteristics. We largely do not talk about that, or we, especially in my class, I haven't talked about that. When this solid waste is there, you talk about all industrial wastes also. What is in the syllabus? Only municipal solid waste, but. But UGC syllabus says waste, solid waste, right? Give a classification of the waste. Give a waste. Oh, we should give a classification of the solid waste. Okay, that's what you so do. Basic classification, how is industrial uh, solid waste is being uh, disposed. After that, we'll be concentrating purely on municipal solid waste. That's what you do in the class? Yeah. Okay, so basically you talk about that in hazardous, industrial, and municipal, biomedical, biomedical everything, house, basic yeah. things. Oh, okay. The one lecture, we'll be completing everything, then we'll be concentrating entirely on the municipal solid Very nice. So how many lectures do you take on solid waste? Mm, usually some 10. 10 lectures? Yes. Yeah, okay, I just take two. So <laughs> yeah, that's a little bit too crispy here. So 10 lectures on solid waste? Uh, okay. Very. Because in our syllabus, actually, environmental engineering last module is uh, purely on municipal solid waste. So, oh, okay. But start. what is your university actually? Huh? What is the name of your university? Uh, Mahatma Gandhi University. Mahatma. But is it same for everyone? By the way. So it's it's ten lectures. I'm I cannot. Okay. So let me ask someone else. How many lectures on solid waste? Four. Three. Only. Four? Three. three. And how, what do you do in three, three lectures? Uh, so, in that we will discuss mainly the classification first. Mm. Second one. So classification is, means hazardous. Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, based on the sources, okay. Uh, second one, we will discuss about the sources. The sources. Okay. Uh, later on, we will discuss uh, what are the effects regarding to the okay, solid impact. waste. Okay. Impact. And uh, lastly, we will discuss about the control measures of uh, to manage the solid waste. Okay. So, three lectures. Yes. Ten lectures, three lectures. Who else here? It's one course on solid waste? Solid waste no, but I'm talking about environment studies course then. In environment studies, generally three to four lectures. Three to four lectures. What's the name of your university? NIT Surat. NIT Surat. Yeah, three to four lectures. That was, we were doing in IIT Rudki, three, four lectures. Here, a little bit is cut here. Ten lectures, three, four lectures. What is in other? Yeah. We have a course, uh, independent course on solid waste management. No, no, but that's different. Uh, my question is that under UGC norms, yes, this is the environmental studies course. Uh, within that, we have uh, four four lectures. Four lectures. Yes, we have three three lectures.
I am from KITM Kulshetra okay. and uh, the clearing this environmental study uh, subject is compulsory for all the trades yeah, yeah. and it, uh, it is uh, being taught in first year classes. Mm -hmm. So uh, I took uh, uh, two lectures for completing uh, this topic. Solid waste. Solid waste yeah. management. Sir, you Thank you. With the solid waste management, we take up the different types of pollution. Ah, okay. Whatever the waste materials come across, or yeah. That. So you talk about all air, solid, liquid, all kind of. Uh, including noise pollution and uh, even other types of the pollutions, uh, thermal pollution also. Hmm. And then we come to the solid waste management. How right. do we take up the two, three, two to three, uh, three lectures, lectures over this? Okay. And we cover the sources, control measurements, minimizes, and uh, various other impacts on the society. So if I if I'm taking it in some sense, it's largely two to four lectures. Sir, Anna University they have given under uh, environmental pollution, sir, yeah. under the heading Anna yeah. environmental pollution. Yeah. So the I completed my PhD in solid waste management. Yeah. Oh, very good. So that uh, who was your uh, uh, that uh, waste degradation, ah, lignin, okay. uh, cellulose degradation, everything. Okay, nice. And then vermicomposting. Yeah. And but how many lectures you take? That uh, usually it's. Uh, it's a very important area, the, though I completed my PhD in that no, area. No, that's, no? So that's that fine, but how many lectures you so take? So, four lectures. Okay, four. four. So, it's sir. largely three to four lectures then. Okay, that's what I also do actually. So, it's more, so that means what I, am, I will teach, it's very re much relevant in that sense because ultimately except those who take ten lectures, I also take three to four lectures on solid waste management. Actually, sometimes it's three, sometimes it's four. Yeah, yes. Sir, actually, uh, I was going to speak about EVS. Yeah. Uh, our paper, Environmental Engineering 2, it's basically dedicating uh, one mod entire module. That was the actual reason. So say again, uh, which course you're talking about? Uh, speaking about Environmental Engineering. Yeah, uh, but, okay, so, so that's a different course probably, right? Yeah, actually. Yeah, but, but that's that's fair. So I'm just asking about this course. In Environmental Sciences, study, sir, it's around or three to four only. Environmental Sciences. Three or four. Three or four, it. okay. RGPV syllabus, they are having the, uh, in Bhopal, Madhya Pradesh, they are having triple ES, engineering, uh, environment, uh, ecology, uh, environment, uh, energy, uh, energy environment and ethics. Oh, okay. Ecology. Yeah. So it is common for all the branches. Yeah. And in civil engineering, we are having that environmental engineering. So water supply and uh, this uh, uh, sanitary engineering we are having. Yeah, but, but that's different yes. course. Yeah. Okay, so how, so we are just here, please remember that we are not talking about solid waste management as a course or what we deal with solid waste. My question is very simple that under environmental science, I don't know, it's what you call it, environmental studies or environmental sciences, how much of your lectures are dedicated on solid waste management? I'm not concerned about otherwise what you do for civil engineering or chemical or whatsoever. So I see that it's two to three or depending on the like four, that's what you do, right? Okay, very good. So the, another question which comes in my mind, how many of you are either civil or chemical or mechanical or electric engineers? Civil. Mostly civil? Yeah, civil? So largely it's taught by civil engineering department? Okay, how many of you are from humanities but teach the course? Okay, so in many places it's done by humanities department. Yeah, may I ask you, so you say you are expert in literature or something or, or English? Applied sciences. Applied sciences, yeah. Applied sciences, okay, that's nice too. Okay, so it's largely taught by uh, science and engineering faculty then. Anyone who is teaching environmental studies or anyone's institution, they teach environmental studies, but their background is not science and engineering? No one, right? That's pretty nice in a sense that what I teach is more relevant in that sense then. Yeah. I'm from economics. Economics, okay, but that, if you see the half of our module is, is taught by economists and political scientists, etc. So that's fair enough also. So what I, I have tried to do it is, I kept so simple that everyone can, you know, understand it. You do not, you just need common sense rather than expertise kind of thing, okay. So by the way, you're right that uh, if it's nice, we give classification up front that what kind of waste is solid waste and what's industrial waste. I just speak it up in my class. I just say that there is industrial waste, there is a biomedical waste. Biomedical waste I cover in this course and also electronic waste partially co covered of course. And But I do not have a formal way of uh, 
explaining to the students that there is industrial base, this much is agent and hazardous waste. Because the obvious reason is I have to finish this in three to four lectures and if I deviate a little bit more then it becomes too much. Okay. So that's why I always say that this environmental source studies course need to be tweaked the way it is more important as per the syllabus but also how important it is for the city or community also. Please make that point also. For example, if, if you're living in a very remote area and there is no air pollution, so for should more focus should be on other kind of pollution. That's what I think personally. Okay, so I start with this beautiful pictures, okay? Not taken by me, of course. And I tell the student that this is what I will cover. I hope it's very much clear that you know, I talk about that this is what is happening. See the number of bottles and how you will find the stray animals. And in many of our cities, we will find this every time we when go past through, we say chi chi, chi chi, ganda hai. But when no one is looking at us very conveniently, we throw our waste also. So that's the whole idea to little bit sensitize it, to tell people that, okay, chi chi comes from us clean our houses. So uh, by the way, we clean our houses, but we don't want to clean the streets, right? So that's a little bit of sensitization thing. And then I also tell that this is a nice way of doing it. So that picture is a little bit interesting. And this is the way I start this course, right? And I also tell them an interesting story, that hypothetical story. That story is that we will have a party in the hostel. OK, we will have beautiful, all kind of good food. And the next day, we, and at 2 p.m. or 2 a.m. you will sleep. Of course, if the party, people sleep late. Yes. And after that, we do nothing. You go to your rooms. The safai wala goes to his house. He doesn't come back. Next day, you go to hostel. The cook is there. He cooks, but do not, they don't clean it. The next day, same. We are cooking good food every day. But the simple thing we are doing is the one person who cleans our hostel, etc., they won't do it. Then I asked them what will happen after five, six days. Many of them are still thinking like you thinking. So what will happen after seven days? Order will come there. All kinds of these flying, flying things will be there. And then I tell that when we won't have more, more hostels, we will have more hospitals. Because ultimately, we will start becoming sick in five, seven days. And everyone has to go to hospital. So everything in hostel will convert it to hospital. And they said, really? OK. But yeah, but that's the point that if the simple thing, if we do not clean this solid waste management, we do not do it the proper way, ultimately, most of us get sick, right? And then this example of this 14th century Europe, when they were not paying much of attention to the solid waste collection and disposal, OK, this was something like a primitive type of modernization. People have beautiful houses, but not throwing it everywhere. So what happened is this plague started coming there. And actually, many people died, which can be attributed to the solid waste management, mismanagement of solid waste. So it's still a little bit of sensitization of the course, telling them to see how important it is. Okay? Then I say to them that, what are the deal? What's the deal about solid waste? Why it is a little bit tricky to treat it? Because if we can have, if we can go to where? Moon? To sun? We went to sun? No? Not yet? Okay, so what's the deal about solid waste? The deal is, what is the deal about solid waste then? If I ask this question. See, if we can have all kind of beautiful technologies. G, uh, what's the new technology now? I6, iPhone 6. We can have nuclear power plants. We can have supersonic planes, etc. What is the deal about solid waste then? Why we are not dealing with the solid waste the way we should deal? So I just tell them very simply that it's all about segregation. Okay, you see here, different components takes a lot, lot different times to, to degrade. And if I mix them together. I do not know, know how to degrade them, how to transform them. They need different technologies for dealing with different types of things. Okay? 
So it's not, I don't want to read it here because it's you know, not teaching you, but basically if I tell you that plastic probably lives there forever, glass bottles, etc. we don't know, tin, aluminum, etc. it won't degrade for many years, actually virtually it's every, every time there. But food waste will degrade very fast. So if you mix them together, we have a problematic solution, problem, we do not know what is the right solution for that. Okay, that's what I do. How much of waste you generate every day? And that's left for calculation by the students. So assuming you're a student today, please calculate how much of MSW you generate every day. And it shouldn't be that difficult. Imagine the container you're at your house in which you put your waste. Imagine the what kind of waste you put. You should be able to calculate. So can you just please calculate? You have these two pieces of white papers. Please calculate everyone that how much waste you generate. And then we will have competition who is more generating more waste. Left right or center. So that's the way I do it in class also, okay? So everyone has these two papers, two white uh, sheets, A4 size. Yeah, please use one of them. It's for you, just write your name and center number, whatever is, instead of rule number. Calculate how much waste you generate approximately. It's not that you're not tested here, but just how, how good you are in guessing. It's like, and do not copy, huh? Do not copy from others. No one knows how much you generate in your house. How much? Right side. Okay, so you have a question or you have answer? Okay. Point, how much? One kg 50 grams. Who, is, who said one kg 50 grams? You, this much you generate at house? Per person? No, per day, I ask per day. 1 kg 50 grams, okay, go to America, that's what they do here. We generate very less, just joking. But are you sure you calculated correctly? 0.5 kg per day, okay. 400 grams per day. It looks like most of you know it, so you just put it there. 0.5 kg per person? Really? I calculated for myself, it's not more than 150 grams. And most of them I attribute to my kids. They produce more waste because they throw food, they throw everything. 225 grams. I, I personally think that those who are saying it uh, 500 grams, they know it, they are not calculating it. Pardon? So how did you calculate one kilogram, sir? What is in one kilogram? Because uh, that uh, sometimes paper I used. No, but uh, can you just put the number then? That how much paper you waste every day? On average. Okay, so this is approximately 400 grams, 225 grams, and uh, one person from Jammu, you said from Jammu, Jammu wale thoda jada karte hain. It is one kilogram, how many grams? One kilo plus 50 grams. Very interesting number. 1.05. Okay, sir. 1.1. Yeah, better than Jammu. Okay, from where are you from? Jaipur wale you must coloring. Okay. Who else? 350 grams from uh, from Tamil Nadu. Tamil Nadu wale are doing much better. Okay. Approximately one kg. One kg per person per day. Okay. Very good. So this okay. So that is I, I personally think many of you haven't calculated it properly, but this is a good exercise to do. And uh, I calculated for my house for a month. It's approximately 150 grams per person per day. Okay, so probably I produce less. Okay, and once I tell this, I ask, tell the students also that how much is generated in terms of average in India. It's in small towns, it is 100 grams per person per day. If you are in medium towns, it's 300 to 400 grams per day and it's in larger towns, 500 grams per day, per person per day. In average, they, it says 0 0.3 to 0 0.6. You can say that for rough estimation, it's 0 0.5, half kg per person per day. The question then I ask is, why the small city people produce less? Why the, uh, generally, this is the India trend, right? They do not eat packaged food. They don't eat packaged food. Habits, lifestyle. Okay, when uh, I was young, I never ate, ate pizza. I never went to a restaurant for many days except, I do not know, once in a year kind of thing. But that's not the case now, right? Okay. You want to say something? 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, డిపెండ్స్ and uh, whether they usually go for restaurants or what so like this for one month uh, average we have taken so for our city it is coming round about 350 grams per capita very nice uh, okay very okay yeah go ahead if you want to tell yeah so so far what i do in this course it takes little bit less time because i always run little, little bit less time i sensitize this issue i make the students to understand little bit and start thinking that what they are doing okay it's not that what once i start or my students start thinking that what's happening they will change their lifestyle they won't right even if i know that i am producing 1 kg i don't change the next day and start producing 200 g it won't happen you agree with me the whole idea here is to sensitize this issue is uh they become conscious they become conscious in terms of environment in long run probably right they won't change their lifestyle yes sir what do you want to say city yeah uh, especially in the class in my class I, we have around 20 students 20 students so, yeah so i i conducted a kind of a survey what my colleague just said yeah. um, but in much more simpler manner hmm. and we uh, got to know which is very shocking is that majority of the waste uh, solid waste generated by them hmm. is actually food waste food waste which is related to either vegetable fruits or say uh, any kind of which is related to food Why and not? they themselves were pretty much shocked that majority of the solid waste generated by individuals is related to very food. interesting sir very interesting so most of the waste generated from our houses largely that you heard it's always at a host level right is a food based right you agree with me and not many students comes with this answer because they have never done a survey but you know you start thinking little bit more that's the whole idea of having this large exercise sir okay. one more point yeah uh, and also we observe that uh, for uh, developed areas yeah. in a city also if i'm going to take like uh, how we have got uh, hira nandani a posh area yeah, in yeah. mumbai yeah. likewise uh, in belgaum we have got uh, what is known as hanuman nagar something like that so likewise we have selected the areas and we uh, found that the posh areas are generating more amount of waste absolutely very nice excellent so i don't get these answers from my students hello sir because they are not expert right you right yeah Hello. okay so i don't want to go into detail of just on this 5.5 and all these numbers but the whole idea is because the answers you guys are giving because you are expert right students are not students have not even thought for many days of this so wonderful that's what i always explain to them most of the waste is food waste and rich people have more waste that's why you will find that the developed countries right developed countries us uh germany all these developed countries generally have more waste as compared to us so whole idea is to and the answers you are giving that's answer i have to give to student because they don't know it okay so i don't want to yeah i just take the last question because it's it's not the part of yeah actually the standard of living is directly related to the solid waste produce per person very per nice day. yeah that's what in it's us they produce 2.5 kg whereas in india it is yeah. even less than half kg yeah so this that's what i explained to them that it's related to lifestyle most of our you will see in the next slide what what i tell to them i will come to this little bit later because you just little bit uh, took it far but it's everything is related to the lifestyle it's related to the income also if you try to correlate with the income because you're saying that high end people have more waste it's related to income okay so also i, I tell that thing and i also tell that you know the most of our waste generated is from larger cities if it is uh, six if i just take six mega cities my 18% or that kind of waste is coming from six large cities and the next 17% is coming from 100 1 million plus cities uh, less than 100 cities and then if i include the 500 other cities which are 1 lakh plus cities that is coming 37% or so 
So basically your whole problem, if you see the 72 or 73 percent of waste is generated in larger cities. Okay, the problem is concentrated. That means it's concentrated on the larger cities. And I also have to tell them the, all these stories about related to income, why developed countries have more waste. And I also ask them, are we going on the same path as of US or as of Germany? That means is development always means that we are moving towards more waste generation or should we backtrack sometime? Should we say no, this is not the right path. So this is more about sensitization and give them some numbers, okay, and how much urban local bodies spend. This is a little bit old number telling that most of our money actually is gone just for the, the collection and transportation. We do not uh, have a lot of treatment money, we do not spend, or urban local body do not spend much money on the treatment. Little bit telling them that actually there is no treatment happening, okay. So this is all idea of this is so far sensitization and give them some numbers. If, if you talk to any scientist and engineer, they are very interested in numbers. Kitna, okay, that's always a question. You cannot tell them high, low, no one believes in science in high, low. And then I show this interesting, uh, say that how per capita generation is increasing and then it's, someone has done it from 1947 interestingly. And I also tell them it's increasing after 1947. So now you, you should also have in your mind why 1947. Yeah, so we became independent. We thought generate more waste. Yes, that's what is happening. It's not like that. Economy, per capita income, lifestyle, etc., is leading to change. So this is what I tell to them. Okay. And after that, I tell the total waste generated, it's, it's just a little bit of forecast, but approximately less than 100 million tons in totality. You can argue that its number can change. I also tell them that these numbers are not so accurate. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's forecast. Okay. And also the figure that you have shown in the two slides before to this, yeah. that looks that it's... Uh, per day. Yeah, but that 1.5, it maybe the present figure must be much higher. It looks yeah, like could that be. is 98. Yeah, that's what I tell them. It's not accurate. Yeah, 98, 99. Uh, Pardon? That 1.5. 1 1.1 1 1 million yeah. tons. Yeah, it's much, much higher than that. We don't have very good number that came from, I think, in 2000. 2.6 so. million. Yeah, yeah, you, you, we can have different numbers. But I also tell them, if you see, even to estimate how much waste we're generating is not so accurate because our pollution control board, et cetera, sometimes are not doing a very decent job. For example, how much waste we generate in Maharashtra? Or let's say how much waste we generate in Mumbai. Who is from Mumbai? Okay, how much waste we generate in Mumbai? It was in Hindustan times. Okay, no idea? Yeah, so, so they say 7,000 tons, they sometimes they say 10,000 tons, sometimes they say 12,000 tons, it's, it's somewhere in between, even actually a little bit more than that. So the numbers are not so accurate and it depends how they are in public domain. Okay, it's not that if I know from municipality, I can just quote it. It should be in literature, somewhere it should be print in printed form. Okay, it's 12,000. So these numbers are, it's, it's not so accurate. It's keep on changing. It's not about number. It's all about telling that how much actually waste is generated and how much area is required to dump those waste. Okay, how much landfills are required. And if you calculate the, the cost of this land, for the city like Mumbai or for the cities like you're coming from, you'll find that's really high. The cost is really high. Okay, it, you're talking about a precious land which otherwise can be used for some purpose, is just used for the dumping of solid waste. And that's what I want to tell them in this slide. Then comes what? Characteristics of the waste. What is in my waste? Different cities have the different thing. Someone from Assam told me that our most of our part of waste is food waste. But if you include the waste which is coming outside our houses, like streets and etc. etc., so there is a lot of residue material which is inert in nature. For example, street washing and sometimes even construction and uh, construction and uh, construction debris also. Okay. So basically, you are very right. Most of our waste is biodegradable in nature, largely food based. And when I include the street sweeping, etc., a lot of my waste is inert in nature. That means dust and dirt, etc. So why I tell this? 
I tell them that now we have to think about technology to process it. And the technology will depend upon what I generate. What are the characteristics of my waste? Okay, so that's the reason of telling this. I define what is solid waste management. I don't have to tell it here. This is a little bit interesting definition and then I tell how these different components are linked to this. Okay, started from generation, collection, and transport, transformation, disposal. For you guys, it's not interesting, but you should tell to your students that this is how it is done. Okay, that's the whole idea here. So this one, what's that? Yeah, yeah, the color coding, etc. is okay. I don't tell them this color coding things. I just tell them there are the two things you have to do, and that's bare minimum. Dry, dry and wet. Organic, no, no. organic, inorganic, whatever you call it, dry and wet. That is the bare minimum you have to do. Now you are doing at home, probably nothing, just you have one bin, at least have two bins. Okay? Even you know, maybe knowing it, but I also tell them that, you know, even having these two bins will solve our 50% of problem. Wet means what? Largely food based, dry means remaining. If I can segregate this 50%, 45% which is coming from my houses, my half of problem is actually solved. You know, that's why the segregation has so much important role to play in all waste management. Forget about very good, bad technologies. If I can segregate it, my half problem is gone. And for that, I just need two beans actually. I can have four or five color coded beans, etc. That's going to be okay. But even this little bit tweaking, it's a very little tweaking, right? I have one container at home, everyone has one. So I, if I just have two, half our problem is solved. Separate, dry. Sometimes people ask, what is, sir, what is wet waste? For example, this polythene or this uh, milk packets, right? Many of we are having this milk which is now comes in packets, right? So is it a dry or it's a wet? How many is it dry? Okay. How many is it dry? Milk packets? Dry, 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 dry. Okay. How many you say wet? Very less. It's basically a dry waste because it's a plastic, right? And that has created a lot of problem. When, for example, I also tell this story about this segregation of dry and wet waste in IIT. In IIT, we are doing it in some places, right? But what happens because of this, actually the nature, it looks like wet waste, right? It has some milk remaining, some water remaining. Everyone is putting that into wet waste. And then if I want to take it for biodegradation, that's not a good idea because ultimately I'm putting plastic into that. By the way, that comes in dry waste. Okay, so that's a challenge also. Is it not a challenge? Ultimately, I want to put it in dry waste, but then eventually everything becomes wet, practically. So no one wants to put your plastic, this milk plastic bags into dry waste, because ultimately it's dry waste will be spoiled. Okay, you know that what I'm saying? So what should we do with them, with those waste, those plastic, milk plastic packets? Yeah, recycle is okay, but for example, if I just two bins, I don't want to, eh? Re? No, no, that's after. You are, you are not understanding. I'm saying that I have just two beans. Dry it first and who will do it in the house, right? No one wants to do that. That's a little bit tricky challenge. I'm saying it's a dry waste, but actually it's wet. And I cannot say people first have a dryer instead of putting on here, put in there. It's a practical problem. I, we have identified it in our campus itself. No one wants to put them in dry waste. So that's why that kind of things need to be told and then you know different kinds of interesting bins, litter bins, these mechanical sweepers, probably now these small cities and large cities are also buying these sweepers. We have in Hiranandani areas these mechanical sweepers, cleaning, collecting dirt, etc. from the streets. Okay. So so far so good. What else do you tell in your class? What else should I tell in my class rather than this? Yeah. Suggestion? Yeah, that will come after, of course. Oh, we will, yeah, that comes certainly after. But so far, in terms of generation, etc. Yes, please. I'm uh, R. Naresh Kumar from BIT Mesra. BIT so Mesra. I start, I'm teaching this paper for last three years. Yeah. So what I do first thing, I start, um, start with a diagram. Yeah. And then I ask the students. What's the to, diagram, by the way? Uh, it will just a dump site. What's it? Dump site. Assume dump site, okay. Dump. Hmm. And then I asked them, just now imagine what are we adding 
and what are the impacts it is going to create okay. and how we are going to solve that, that is what you are going to learn in this paper. Very nice, yeah. Okay. Then that, that once the ball is set in, then it rolls on its own. Okay, so you think it's not rolling here? <laughs> I'm just joking, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I see what you're saying, that's also a very good idea. Telling this is dump site and how you're dealing with it, nicely, okay. I tell about this door-to-door -door collection, someone comes to your door, it collects and then they have this kind of this four tire wheeler, this vehicle, they take it there. The problems is in some communities, for example, the, what do you call them in, in slum areas. In all city doesn't have slum areas, but in, in Mumbai we have a lot of slum areas, 60%. 60% of the population lives approximately, I'm not, please do not quote me, but they live in slum area and so on and so forth. So how do we collect waste there? That trolley, etc. cannot go, right? There's no space. There is, you cannot ask people to collect and keep it inside their houses also. Because houses are not so big. So that's another challenge, okay? And, you know, sometimes I also tell my students that this is a new business you have to think on. You, because you may be knowing this, IIT Bombay is very uh, popular in having entrepreneurs, right? We have so many startup companies. I tell my students now you should have a company on waste management. Thinking of different aspects of waste management. It's a few a thousand crore business. You may be knowing it, right? It's a thousand crore business. So that kind of thing I tell you. And I also tell them what this little bit bigger bins, the communities having those bins. Okay, so all by, here I am talking about is the generation and the collection, right? And then these larger bins, not in India. We, we have more or less discarded these kind of bins. These community bins are gone from India. Why? Because our street, streets are becoming narrow, especially in cities like Mumbai, there's no space to keep these community bins, okay? In smaller places, in smaller towns, you will find there are community bins also, okay? So that's an interesting way that what you do is, every time when you go morning outside your house, you put this in the community bin. But you, may, you know why we have discarded or discontinued community bins. Why? Stray animals and then people have a tendency to throw it. Okay, so how do I throw it, right? So this is a bin, for example, right? So I'm going very fast, so I just throw it like this and it goes outside. So the second person who was supposed to come closer cannot come closer now. So he stole from here now. Okay, so he throws it here. And then the third person throws it a little bit farther away. So everything becomes dirty. And then we say, kya yaar gande log hai? Kaun hai ganda? Bhi. Okay, so that's, that need to be told to students also that, you know, to sensitization is also important here. And after that, types of collection systems, there's stationary and hauled container systems. Largely we have stationary container system. That means we are not actually transporting the container. In some cities, in some countries, they actually take the container along with it. There is a hook to the container, they take it by that. We are actually not using this anymore in India, actually. Okay, so basically we are not using station, we are using stationary container, not hauled container system. Then these are big, big trucks, compactors. Have you, every city has compactors now? Who is from Jammu? Jammu wale kaan gaye? Ha. Do you have a compactor in your cities to collect waste? This type of compactors? Everyone has compactor in their cities or still you're using trucks? Truck, truck, truck. Only trucks. Ordinary trucks. So why do we need compactors? <laughs> that is very interesting. I don't know. <laughs> why do we need compactors? <laughs> okay. What is the density of waste? Very nice. Who said 160? Okay. Why not 150? Yeah, 150 to 160. It's normally for sure it is about 150. Yeah. Around 150 to 160. Yeah. So you can increase nice. to almost is 450 to. So you see, very nice. So that's what I tell them. You know, if you have big like plastic bottles or plastic containers and even sometimes packing materials, if I have to just put them in a truck without compaction, I need to transport, need a lot of trips, additional trips. Yes? And but if I have this compactor, I can do increase my density two to three times. That means I have to take less trip to the disposal site. We may not do uh, perfect compaction in the dumping site also. Yeah. So thereby I could store so many, uh, so much in the dumping operations in this. 
Okay, so you're helping, you're saying even if you're helping in terms of total landfill sites also. Landfill site also. Actually, that's, that, that may not be true for all cities. At least compaction is happening in dumping sites. And you, know, you see that we big, uh, big wheel kind of system is used. It's largely because the density of our waste is much, much lesser. We have cardboard, we have high volume, but less density. So we want to compact it so that we can transport more. What is the density of water? Yeah, don't worry about that. I asked my students. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to answer. No, don't worry. I asked my students, what is the density of water? Let's start thinking. I also show this slide. You can see it after that. What is the density? And why you will find that the density of waste in 12 countries is less than even in the developing countries. Why it is so? It's less food waste. Less food waste, less dirt and dust. Okay, they have more cardboard, paper, and plastic, etc. I also tell that. So I stop here. Except that treatment disposal, which you are mentioning, which I will talk a little bit later. What else do you teach in your class? The very nice idea came from BIT Mishra that we should tell them how come that. That can also be included in your classes to make it a little bit interesting also. What else? What else do you teach? Kurukshetra mein kya karate ji? After this, whatever you have uh, taught us, I would like to uh, taste the impacts of uh, the solid waste generation on our society, on our environment. And then after, how can we manage the solid waste by different ways? Okay, very good. Yeah, we will come to that after. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? Factors influencing the generation rate. Factors influencing generation rate, someone already told no? that I told them it's related to economics, it's related to lifestyle. If I'm eating more pizza, I have a lot of cardboards. If I, my ma mother is cooking, I have more food based. It depends from, and it also varies from one pocket of city from another pocket. For example, if I go to Hiranandani, the waste unit is different from the IIT campus. That thing I tell, but it's not in my slides. You know, this gentleman told everything actually. That's why I don't want to repeat it. Sir, uh, mainly we teach a hierarchy for waste management. Yeah, that comes uh, after I have all processing and etc. I do that too. So, so far, so good. Yeah. Sir, can you also suggest the business aspects so we can business models? Uh, we yes, have sir. to talk about that after after this class, and you have to give me ten percent of whatever business you do after. Will be fine, but sir, it, yeah, it's fruitful for our uh, students also, na, sir. We yeah, can that's, also that's good idea. I also, also tell them. I will tell what what is the business model. Okay. All right, sir. So, any other thing? Well, whatever is remaining, we will teach. Of course, I will tell in the next class. Yeah. So, what is the technology interface in the solid waste management? Technology we will do after. I mean, that's what I will do after 11.30 or so. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So, we dis... How to minimize the waste? How to minimize the waste? Don't generate it. Minimize. Use and food policy should Yeah. Three hours, recycle, reuse and recover. Yeah. We, we will talk about that. Use and food policy. Yeah. At least I suggest to... I tell you what we should do. I should answer it. We should just do what our grandfather or grandmother told us. Don't do what the new people are telling us. When our grandfather, grandmother, when they were in our age, whatever they were doing was the right thing. What we are doing is not right. That's what is happening to environment. Just follow your grandparents. Sir, I normally teach to the student that waste is not a waste, it is a resource. So yeah. we should use in that way. Yeah. We, we can also, convert into energy, biofertilizer. Yeah, we also tell that, but we also tell them that actually it is waste because that's why it's waste. Sir, yeah. sir, I uh, teach to the B.Tech first year students, hmm. uh, common to all branches. Hmm. So the most difficult thing is to make them understand. The first question they ask is, sir, okay, let the waste there be. What is the problem? <laughs> why, how are we concerned with it? Okay. So the basic so I problem think is... I tell them the story that... Yes, you yes, know, yes. About we the have hostel, to... I, we have a party. We eat whatever you want to eat and then don't clean it for 10, 20 days and you leave in the yes, hostel. Sir, that that was very even good. Even if you can live in two days in the hostel which is not clean, be my guest forever. Yes, then it's not our problem. This is the basic challenge that, yeah. we, first of all, we have to get them realize that wh why this is a problem for them. Yeah. That's so the that's basic what issue. I sensitize it from, uh, from the hostel yes, sir, example. That, example. That, 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 that was we good. will have a party, you are all my guest, but the only thing I won't do is not clean your hostel. A similar problem uh, I also had faced when I was uh, conducting programs in Godrej. So one day what we did, we took all that time, th th these were school children, we took them to dumping ground. 
Okay. And showed them that, see, this is what is happening. Hmm. And now capacity has exhausted. Hmm. Where will this waste go further? Okay. If so you, when if they if saw that waste dump, they really like now they could get uh, feel of it that yeah. oh really this. Yeah. If I if you are dealing with student children, it's very easy. They are obedient. Yeah. yeah. They are nice. No, no, yeah, no. They Even are realistic. <laughs> they are truthful. Yeah. Not us. <laughs> No, even no. sir, our B Tech students, uh, they are doing some project on like they are, they are calculating how much waste is generated in Koyamatur and they go to dumping site and there are some measures taken by municipalities. So they, they have done that and uh, they have con uh, done one documentary. Yeah. If time permits, I, I can show sure, that. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Talking uh, on like uh, waste management sources or something, yeah. we can start directly with uh, the MSW rules 2000. What is the main requirement in that? Yeah. So we can start insisting on this is the rules you have to follow something like. Yeah, yeah. We, we, I talked about that a little bit in shorter time. Instead of uh, having the uh, last part, we can start, these are the mandatory requirements in MSW 2000. Yeah. Starting with the Okay, segregation. so what happens is I tell them, then I say we don't follow them. So there's a acha theek hai fir kya karna hai interested to do business on solar solar business they must they must at least watch one pro, very beautiful program that was telecasted on tv in satyamev jate some 3 4 yeah. months back yeah. by yeah. amir khan hosted by amir khan very good business i also tell them to see that movie that satyamev jate yeah. episode also excuse me yeah you have to tell about the Supreme Court rule. So when the Supreme Court have to rule because our empowered committee, you have to tell about the empowered committee and pilot study. Very then nice. This. I, I think, so here is the catch. Here is the catch is that, here is what I think about different things, right? And in addition to that, it's a course in which the student has to pass, number one. And I have to deliver the whatever I have to deliver in three hours approximately, right? Three, three lectures you mentioned, right? So I can tell them everything on the earth and actually if, even if I start talking to you guys, we'll find some solution also, right? But they are students and they have to pass also. So what is the idea is to give them the bare minimum sensitization, little bit, and after that let them sleep because sensitize, you can sensitize everyone, then everyone will be in jail. For example, I cannot sensitize my, my son just to read hard. If he doesn't read, he doesn't read, right? You understand what I'm saying? So sensitization is okay, but at the same time, it's a course also. So there are three aspects of sensitization because Supreme Court want to tell to everyone and at the same time to pass the exam. So if you can just try to balance it, I don't know how. Okay, that's fair, fair enough. Excuse me. Yeah. The, uh, the data which we have collected from the uh, survey of the per family capita hmm. uh, generation of waste, but uh, the data is, uh, uh, if uh, it involves the data which is uh, uh, produced during the uh, various ceremonial processes and various ceremonies, festivals, mm -hmm. that is much more than the per family capita data. Of course, it is. So another thing I also tell about this characterization, like characterization and quantification. Actually, the quantification characterization is so difficult. You, every one of you know, student probably don't that it's almost impossible to have accurate numbers. Survey only tells about the, uh, the generation of this uh, solid waste per family only. Okay. But that is uh, very, uh, lesser amount than the which we generate during the functions and various other uh, organizations, okay. festivals and all ceremony, ceremonies. Very Excuse good. Me, so in Excuse fact, me, you know, it's like I can see that every one of us wants to do something on solid waste management. <laughs> but it's nevertheless it's just a course, right? And of course, many of you are researchers, so that's why your research is coming out, huh? Actually, yeah, sir. I can do this, I can do that. Thank you very much. So we meet after this uh, break.